white nationalism and Christianity. White nationalism and Christianity. Is Christianity not part of our oppression if it has existed as long as blacks have been subjugated? That's the question I want to respond to here. Mao Zedong said religion is the opiate of the masses. We believe in God. Communists don't believe in God. They believe that religion is the, is the what of the masses. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And Napoleon's quote is saying, religion keeps the poor man from killing the rich man. Christianity as, as a religion has existed for approximately two millennia. And during the two millennia, uh, we've gone through the Holocaust and the Maya of enslavement. And we're still struggling from the effects of this institutionalized, Europeanized form of worship. And the harm that it's wreaked on us as a people. Africans created Christianity. And so I want to know, can the same system used to oppress us be used as a tool for our liberation? Alexander of Macedonia's conquest of Egypt in 333 B.C. sounded the death knell, the death knell for classical Af East African civilizations. The wholesale book burning, looting, destruction of temples, and African civilization was basically a war against African excellence that existed for 3,000 years prior to the incursion of the Greco-Roman Empire. The Greeks basically were busily destroying this uh, millennial or multi-millennial legacy. And during the destruction of it, uh, since they wanted the total attention of the Africans that they were conquering, they insisted that it was illegal for Africans to practice spirituality. Uh, the new faith, Christianity, was a resistance to the Greco-Roman Empire and traditional African religious forms were banned. It was illegal for people to have formalized religions, especially African religions. And so they wanted really for the Africans to look upon them as they might have looked upon the pharaohs in, in more ancient times. They wanted, them, they wanted to be deified. Alexander put his name on the currency in Egypt and made sure his image was available because he wanted to be looked upon as almost a God-like or almost Christ-like. Um, like I say, the new faith was resistant to the Greco-Roman Empire and the courage of people that was only religious for the most part and only uh, belief was in war and violence. They brought no religious structure there and that's why they were so uh, their, their films are so inimical to what the forms that Africans had produced which segued into Africans producing Christianity. The three patriarchs of the early Christian church were St. Cyprian, Tertullian, and St. Augustine, as documented by Yosef ben Yakinen in his African Origin of the World's Major Religions. These men were all martyred. Again, this was part of the campaign to stifle Africans' attempt at practicing a new form of their spirituality. Again, the Greco-Roman Empire did not want any type of a form of worship, especially connected to anything African, to be uh, practiced in Egypt. And so as a result, uh, Christianity emerged, but it was for the most part underground. Small groups of people getting together, uh, having their own services. And uh, they would rotate whatever the roles were. One person may do, be, do, be doing testimonies. Another person may do the actual sermon. Another person may collect. There may be singing, and those roles always change kind of in the African tradition. And as I said, as the Europeans saw this, and they saw the power of it, uh, many Africans were murdered. As W.B. Du Bois talks about, most of the people that were part of the Persians and Crusades were killed on the continent of Africa. And that just shows that the, it was Africans that the Based and at the origins of the practice of this new form of religion. After centuries of killing people that were Christian, vilifying people that were Christian, trying to destroy this new worship or faith, Europeans decided if we can't beat them, we might as well join them. And so the Roman Emperor Constantine in 333 of the Common Era said, 
I needed religion to unify my empire. When they saw how strong it was, instead of resisting and fighting it, this is when Europeans decided that not only were they going to adopt it, adopt it as official religion of Rome, but also spread it and use it as a means of conquest and domination, uh, particularly not only their people, but of people all across the globe. So what Constantine did was, at his council, and I see he ordered the face images to be altered from African to European. The remnants of this are still, still exist in shrines of the Black Madonna in Poland, Italy, France, and other countries. They clearly document the mother figure and the child is African. And so the mother figure would have been Aset, the child would have been Her Heru, and of course the father was Osar. Osar, Heru, Aset, or as the Greeks said, Osiris, Isis, and Horus. Uh, Africans are, are deeply immersed in the trinity of man, woman, and child. Everything comes from there. Two become one, one become two. That's what their entire uh, belief system uh, from ancient times into modern modernity. This is how life is produced. This is how culture is propagated. And this is how people survive. By the 15th century, Michelangelo used family members' likeness to paint the Sistine Chapel. He wasn't using the ancient African images. And on this note, this is one of the areas where I kind of, uh, I, was, I was attending a church in Detroit, and the church was very progressive in some means because they had organizations and they had uh, different affiliations whereby it was using professionals and asking people, professionals in the com church community to actually serve and to make sure that whatever skills and, and tools that they had could be used to the benefit of not just the church community, but the wider community. I thought that was very positive. But also, it had European image on glass stain, uh, on the glass in, in, in the church. And I, as I did history and I became more immersed and, and more studied and learned about the faith, I realized a lot of this information was totally accurate. So this kind of caused a schism for me. And this was part of what people like Mike and Angel were doing. They were changing images from African to European. And a lot of the images we see that are Europeanized of the faith, especially the early faith, are totally in inaccurate and they're blasphemous, actually, to be quite frank. So before the Council of Nicaea, there was a Septuagint which is a text selection which existed several centuries prior to Nicaea. And it witnessed writings that were reconfigured from metal netter, which is uh, Egyptian words of God, and Coptic, which is the first language of Christianity, to Greek. This was the first significant Europeanization. Septuagint was the first significant Europeanization of the literature. And like I say, after that, the council followed in 333 of the Common Era. Then you had a Latin Vulgate version. It followed, and then finally in the 17th century, the, <laughs> the vile, filthy, degenerate King James commissioned the eponymous King James Version of the Bible. The Holy Bible is a term that derives from Helios Biblos, the hot book, or the book of the people of the sun, according to African-American chemitologist Anthony Browder. Uh, he discussed this extensively in his work, The Browder Files. In 1492, a gentleman uh, named Cristobal Colon, which most people know as Christopher Columbus, uh, according to John Henry Clark, made the accidental discovery of the Caribbeans, and this led to the calamity of uh, African enslavement. And as lost, Colon made three key entries. He saw Africans on boats headed toward the mother continent from this part of the world. He said the soil was rich and bountiful. He also said the people were defenseless. He reported all these facts as benefactor and sponsor of King Ferdinand of Spain. At that point, the decision was made by Ferdinand and other European rulers to enslave Africans and spread us out, spread us through the diaspora. In the 16th century, a Spanish priest named Bartolomé de las Casas, a Catholic, used religion to seal the fate of Africans by stating that Black people so far beneath humankind that they were heathen and should, should be subjected to servitude. Now, if you go on Wikipedia now and you look up Bartolome de las Casas, all, this, all that information has been totally purged. It says that 
Bartolomeo told Lacassus, De Lacassus was actually somebody who was opposed to slavery, and he was against it, and he fought this trade of slave Africans. All things that should cause us to be concerned about uh, using internet searches for information and not relying, as we say, a Bible on books and things that 